Today on Community Cooking, we have guest chef and party planner extraordinaire Randy Furman with us making another great meal. We're bringing back spices in our kitchen with a cumin and black bean rice, roasted cauliflower, and grilled lime cilantro chicken. You won't want to miss it. We're cooking with some of the best chefs from right here in our own community. So grab a seat, get comfortable. We've got another great menu for you. This is your Community Cooking. Hello and welcome to Community Cooking. I am your host, Kirk Lines. In our kitchen today, a very familiar face, someone who's been here countless times. Many. Party planner extraordinaire, Mr. Randy Furman. How are you, Good sir? Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. How nice are things? You. Good, thank you. Good. Business good still? Business good. Been really busy. Done some great things. Just did a thing for 350 people for a 70th anniversary uh, for a temple, which I did 70s party, so I hired roller skaters to be the waiters, and I actually put a camera on it because I wanted to shoot it. So it was a great look that the camera was going around and people were taking appetizers off the tray. If, you know, all you need is a stadium in Lady Gaga, and then all of a sudden it's a, it's it's a, it's my a thing. Super Bowl that's, show. Absolutely. <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, that's, that, that's incredible. I mean, it's one thing just to cook for 350 people. It's another thing to create all these separate stations and, and, and really make it a cohesive. Then all of a sudden you're bringing in theme and a show. And didn't you, you tell me earlier you made the props? And well, we did the props and everything. And it's very 70s. So I used Gerber daisies and I used a turntable and mirrors. So it was all very fun. A lot of mirror balls. I did this over the dance floor. There were nine mirror balls, all different sizes and shapes that were rotating. So it gave you that real feeling using a shimmer curtain in the back of the stage. So when you came in, you really felt like you came back, and everybody came in costumes. Wow. Wow. I mean, if that... If the, <laughs> sold. Sold. You're hired. Great. All right. So When are we doing it? <laughs> I know, right? Let me, let me think. Of, you know, there is, uh, there is some nuptials around the corner, so you never know. You could do a great themed wedding. <laughs> okay. Well, listen. Right now, we're going to make some grilled chicken. Yes, we are. Uh, before we get to the chicken, however, there, there's going to be a rice component in this dish that we're going to do in the next segment, but we're going to be cooking this in real time, so explain to me the process of what you've got going on. So here. what I did is I took a little bit of olive oil. You can use olive oil or butter. It doesn't matter either or, and I browned the rice, and the rice is still really hot. And I've taken my chicken stock, and I've boiled it. So I'm going to turn it down to off Okay. and turn this one to off. Now what's going to happen, you're going to see, it's going to boil, watch, it's going to bubble right up. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that came right to the boil. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this. Get this out of your way. And you don't touch it for 20 minutes. So you are in a sense actually steaming the rice here. We're right. not boiling this rice, we're steaming no, it. No, you leave it alone. It comes out perfect every time. All you just do is a fork and fluff it, and it's done. And then it, I'm sure that probably keeps the rice from overcooking, especially at the bottom where it's hotter. Right. Right. Okay, I like that. Right. That's a nice technique. You don't see people do that all that often. No. All right. It's a foolproof way, and I do, to every cup of rice, I do a cup and a half of liquid, not two cups. I do the same thing. I think it's too much. It's too I much. think that two to one makes soggy rice, in my opinion. Plus, we're going to add. I'm going to be adding some when we get to the rice. I'm going to be adding some ingredients, and it's going to make it a little bit wetter anyway. And if I if I if I rinse my rice or soak my rice at all, then I use even less. Oh, yeah, I would say so. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. So we're going to make the marinade for this this grilled lime and cumin chicken here. Tell me about the ingredients we have here. Shallots, cilantro, cumin, olive oil, sea salt, seasoned pepper. I use a seasoned pepper, chopped garlic, and a hot sauce. A little hot sauce. And then? Lime juice. Lime juice. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to add the cumin first. That one's right in the title. <laughs> right. Then I'm going to add salt. And you want to add enough salt so that it, it binds it. I don't use salt to make things salty. I use salt to bind. I'm going to okay. use also seasoned pepper. The hot sauce. And that's going to have a little bit of a salt component in it as well. Yeah, it will. Shallots. Always nice. And these will caramelize when they're cooking. So to begin with, if you taste this marinade right away, it's going to be bitter. 
kind of have a bitter flavor, but it all mellows out when it cooks. Right, and, and that's sort of the thing with marinades. You always want them bigger than, here's than the you think. Oil. Because they are going to mellow out, the proteins and everything. Right. Okay. And here's cilantro. Great. Okay. All right, so now we're going to mix this up. And here we've got, these are chicken breasts that are on the bone. These are chicken breasts on the bone. You prefer on the bone like that? I would prefer actually boneless with skin on. But you either have to do it yourself or you have to find a butcher. There are a couple of markets that do it. Even your farmer's market. Yeah. You, if you get a butcher that's there, they might do it for you. Some of the higher end, more expensive markets, we won't name names, right. will sell them like that. Yes, we are paying three times the price. This is absolutely the truth. <laughs> absolutely the All truth. Right. So now we're going to take this and pour it over the chicken. Now, the best thing, I'm using a sealable bag. I, I, I always marinate like this, yeah. It's easier because you can, you can actually touch it without getting your hands dirty. And we can squeeze the air out of this and really create a lot of contact without having to flip it around a bunch of times. Right. But the thing is that normally I would do this for overnight. Now, we're just going to actually shake this. I want to make sure it's totally sealed before I start doing this so we okay. don't have it all over us. So, so you would go overnight with this marinade, even though there's the lime juice in it? Yeah, it won't hurt. Okay. Because it just means you'll cook it for less time. Okay. Whenever you use citrus, citrus cooks. Right. So, because it has acid. So what you'll do is you'll do it for less time. That's all. Okay. So let's say I, let's say I, I either don't have 24 hours or uh, uh, at the spur of the moment I say to myself, you know what, I want to really eat that chicken that Randy made. Um, what's the minimum you think you could go with? Two hours. A couple hours. Yeah. All right. I would say two hours. Anything less than that is just not going to pick it up. It's not going to pick up the flavor because you, you really want it to penetrate the skin. Sure. Because that the skin's going to be amazing when you yes. get done with it. Yes. Yeah. And that's why we keep the skin on. As you'll see from the oven. Okay. All right. All right. So now I'm so going to So we're going to say it. that's been marinating for, for 24 hours. Right. Now over here you've got a... I've got a griddle. A grill pan. Nice hot grill pan. Skin side down. Are we just marking it here? Just marking it. Okay. I even do this when I barbecue. I only mark my things because what I want to do is I want to make sure that I cook it properly. So I put it in the oven and I finish it off. You want the chicken to be about 165. Okay. 160. Yeah, so, so what he's referring to is it, it's like these things are, 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 these are very big chicken breasts. They are. And yeah, let me get this out of your way, sir. Do you, you need a hand towel? I've got it. You got it? All right. So these are very big chicken breasts right here. And um, if we were to just cook that on the grill, it would take, first of all, a very long time. Uh, the second thing is, is that because it, the, the surface is in contact with that hot grill, no matter what side you're on, by the time he gets that center cooked, the outer parts of that chicken would just be dried out. So it's going to take about two or three minutes on, on this side. The other side you can leave on. If you want to leave it on for 10 minutes, you could. So it gets that smoky flavor through it. Gotcha. And you're but not going to see it anyway. Yeah, right. right. The, skin, the skin, you want to make sure you just get really nice deep grill marks in. Because what he's going to do, he's going to use that nice dry, he indirect heat from the oven to cook it all the way through. And that way he doesn't have dried out chicken breast, which can happen very easily. Yes, but, it can. But yet another reason to keep it on the bone, right? I mean, yeah. it sort of helps that. And skin as well. If you do boneless, though, it's not bad as long as you don't overcook it. So you really have to be more careful. This, you don't. It's not as dangerous. Yeah, far less cooking time. Far right. less cooking time. Okay, and is this, is this something that you would make for a, uh, a soiree? I would do this for a barbecue or see, look how nice the grill marks yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Okay, let's see how it is over here. Okay. Beautiful. A little anemic for me. I'd like it a little bit darker, but I don't know if they have that much time to... And I think we get what we get. We're a little crowded here, too, just because of the size of those, those, those chicken breasts we're doing and, and the smaller pan. But I think we get what's going on here. And we're putting those marks, the, those, those marks that you see on there. And then it is picking up some of the smokiness there we from go. the grill as well. This is what it should look like. Okay. Yeah, there you go. That's beautiful. And that's also the part that's over the bigger burner. So there you go. That's why. Nice. Beautiful. <laughs> you want to make sure you have great ventilation. Right. And also that you have to make sure that you take a shower before you serve because you're going to smell like smoke. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Very true. So, so you can see how beautiful this is. And what happens is that that marinade that we had left, I would pour over all of this. 
before I put it in the oven so that it really gets a lot more of the shallots and onion and uh, the shallots and the garlic and the cilantro. And also when it, when it bakes, all the juices will come out, and like we have here, you can see. We've got a swap out that in, yeah, in the oven. So these out. are the juices but that it gets brown. It's got a real good flavor. Yeah, that's going to be delicious right there. And then you you actually take it, take all the liquids and reduce it down, and make like a little finishing glaze for it. Right. Okay. Now let, let me ask you this. Uh, let's say the, the problem with the smoke and taking a shower. Let's say you're having a party and you're making this for a group of people. Do could, this way ahead of time. I was going to say, could we mark it ahead of time, hold it, go take a totally. shower, and then throw totally. it in? Totally. And what a, what a nice way to sort of like like move the cooking along and not be like belabored in the kitchen while your guests are there. Nothing worse. Well, no, that's why I always do things that you do ahead of time. This all gets done ahead of time, then you finish it in the oven. Yeah. And this is good room temperature. Sure, sure. This is it's great good. room temperature. In fact, you could take a little bit of mayonnaise. Uh, I'm and mix, mix this with it. Oh. And that becomes your dipping sauce for the chicken. Nice. Right. And, and especially if you're in spring or you're in summertime, having things like, they don't, things don't necessarily have to be served piping hot. See, this looks great. Gorgeous. So, Actually gorgeous. Okay. Yeah. Show the camera. Beautiful. Okay. All right. Go. So these go on now. This is just an ungreased baking sheet that we've just lined with a little bit of foil here. Right. You can do foil or parchment. No. No parchment? Foil. Well, all right. Because otherwise you won't be able to get your, li you, your liquid and everything That's else. true. You want to, you're, you're trying to get the liquids from this. I forgot about that. Yeah, you're right. That's going to absorb into the paper a little bit. All right, so what are, you, what are we looking at in terms of oven time, oven temp and time? I would say time? 350 to 360 for about 30, anywhere from 25 to 35 minutes, depending on your oven. Everybody's, so, everybody's oven is different. So the, 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 uh, the, the trick here would, to, would be uh, invest in a digital thermometer. Thermometer. And right. at about the 25 minute mark, pull it out, take your reading, and if you're anywhere around, like even a little under 160 at that point, you can pull it. I would, I would say 155 because it's still going to set and it's going to cook, and, it's, and if you have to rewarm it. I'm with Because a lot of people, times you don't serve this right away. You normally get it done. It's very unusual that you would take it right from this to the plate. There's, there is going to be something known as carryover cooking, which occurs after you pull it out of the oven. Right. So if you pull it at 155, it will rise to 165. So let's go swap this out. And I'm going to pull out the one that we've had sitting in there. And as you can see, now like we said, we drained off these juices so that it wouldn't have to be carrying very liquidy pan, and but the skin gets so amazing. The flavor in the yeah. skin is incredible. All that stuff's just going to concentrate and, and, and right. be awesome. Okay, right. great. Well, we're done with this. Uh, our rice is cooking. We're going to let that right. finish up through the break. Finish that on the other side, um, along with our cauliflower. Great. All right. So when we get cleaned up here, uh, we'll take a little break. So don't go away. We'll be right back. After 15 years of smoking, Eva Marie quit. There's a new lung cancer screening that could save her life. You stopped smoking. Now start screening. Learn more at savedbythescan.org. Welcome back to Community Cooking. I am in the kitchen with Randy Furman, party planner extraordinaire. Um, and we have... We have we've made our chicken. We're just right. kind of letting that chill out for a bit. Right. Uh, our rice component is our rice is still steaming. It's still it's still cooking. Okay. All right. So we're gonna get started actually on the cauliflower, cauliflower. first, and this okay. is a pretty simple recipe. Cut it right? in half to begin with. Right. Then I take it and I hollow out. Let's, and you, let let's show people too that, that when you do that, it gives you a road map in here of how you want to cut, and now you can sort of break apart the florets. And if they're too big. You can like, cut them again. Yeah, you kind of make like this one's too big, so yeah. I'm gonna cut it in fours. And I want to lay. I'm gonna want to lay down a flat side against the pan so that it browns. Right, because you want that nice caramelization on on right. the flat cut side here. Right. Okay. There you go. Yeah, it's actually very easy. It's. I think if you've never worked with cauliflower, it's a little daunting. Like, how do I get into this? But it's actually very easy. Like you did, did cut it in half and then just follow the road map. It's very 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 easy and. I would normally use colored uh, cauliflower because it looks great, purple, green, and orange. But for some reason, I could not find it at the farmer's market. Okay. Well, you know, it's like anything else. Sometimes it's just not there. But, but white will do. Uh, we can buy this anywhere. Uh, farmer's market is always a good place to get it. Yeah. 
So you go like this. And your vegetables shrink down a little bit when they cook. It's amazing, yeah. It's it, it, you know, it's amazing how quickly a a one head of and that's always a large head of cauliflower. This is a very large head of cauliflower. But it's amazing how quickly that'll go. Don't underestimate. He's right. They they will shrink down. The, the water there's water content in there. So. Okay. okay. All right. Keep going. All right. All right. That's nice big one. Do this. And some of them just come apart by hand. Yeah. There you go. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add olive oil. Okay. We're going to add sea salt, and we're going to add seasoned pepper. That's it. Nothing else. Doesn't need anything else. So goes the olive oil. Okay. You want a sufficient amount. We're also going to add water to it. So we're going to steam these. Here's sea salt. This I use pink Himalayan. And seasoned pepper. Okay. And just toss it. Using the, the utensils God gave you. Right. I'm a hands-on guy. Right. Let me hold that for you so it doesn't slide around. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just put that on there. You want to get all the olive oil. And we... We want this to all hit surface area too. Right. We, we want to sort of spread that out and get those flat sides down on the bottom of the pan like Randy spoke about so that that bottom of the pan is going to be the hottest and it's going to bring some nice caramelization. Right, so now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take this here, Okay. add probably a quarter cup of liquid and then we're going to do a seal it. So what it does, this, see a lot of people when they roast vegetables, they roast it like this without anything, and it takes forever, and it dries out, and it just doesn't have a great flavor, and you're losing all the nutrients. So okay. what I do is I, I just seal that really tightly, and then I put it in a 475-degree oven for about 10 to 12 minutes. Then I open it to check it, and if it starts to get soft, then I uncover it, I pour the liquid out, I, I move the cauliflower around, and then I finish it off for another 15 minutes. So that until it, it starts, right. until it starts getting brown a little bit. Okay, now we have done that already, and we're going to show you what that looks like. Voila! There we go. Beautiful. Okay. Beautiful. All right. So, combination steaming, and then like a real high temperature roast, because that's a that's, right. that's hot. 475. Right. That's hot. That's how I do all my vegetables. Okay. It just, it just makes it easier. All right. So th this is done. It's done. And it's great. And again, this can be served hot or cold. And if you want to bump up it a little bit, you could take a balsamic reduction and drizzle a little bit on top. Oh, yeah, right? Yes, yes, or yes. Or leave it very virginous. Yeah, you know, and, and it's, it's a very sturdy vegetable. So like he said, this is really good the next day, too. I mean, it holds up. It holds up. Now, if it, if it was a dinner party, I would not be making this a day ahead, necessarily. My point is, is that if you have any left over, don't throw it away. Don't pitch it. I mean, figure out a way to use this. Chop it up and throw it into something else. It's still going to have a nice texture to it. All right, so now I've had the pan going. There's a little bit of olive oil in. I'm taking my yellow peppers. You, I, I found some orange, so I added orange peppers to it, real too. Real cornucopia here. Definitely multicolored peppers. We've got some, some peas, some black beans, green onions, and then all of the suspects that went into our marinade. No. No? We're only going to use garlic. Okay. And we're going to make a marinade with the lime juice. So gotcha. Okay. And you want the garlic to kind of toast up a little bit. Okay. So there we go. All right. So, and you just want to break these down. You want this to be crisp. This is a really fresh rice dish. Okay. Where you don't cook it. Like the peas don't even get cooked at all. Okay. In fact, if I had fresh peas, which I couldn't find again at the mar at the at, at the uh, produce market. Um, what I would do is I would use frozen, but I would like to use fresh. And if I use fresh, I just put them in last minute, and they're nice and crunchy, which is amazing. So just let some of the carryover heat kind of take the raw off of it? Right. Okay. Right. So this is what we do with this. We let it sit for a minute. Now let's look at the rice. Okay. Well, it's, been 20, it's been 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. All right. And that has steamed up. See, look at that. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Hold that for you. Excellent. All the water's been absorbed. And all the grains are separate. Excellent. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to take, uh, perfect, that little, let's move. What you need, this one right here? Yeah. Got it. I'm going to take my lime juice. Get this stuff out of your way here. I'm going to do the cilantro, the cumin. Pepper, okay. salt. You want to mix it up because you don't want to you don't want to put it in here because you want it to be able to spread. So what we'll do is we'll pour this over. Right. So in other words, don't put the individual ingredients on top of this rice. It's never going to mix quite correctly. Right. And this almost becomes like a like a dressing, like a rice salad of sorts. Right. Very much. Which so. I would imagine is going to be even more awesome the next day cold. You could serve it cold, absolutely. It's a great, again, it's a great picnic. It's a great, for if it's during the summer months, it's great to use for that. Bring it All to right. a barbecue, absolutely. Right. Again, these are things you can do ahead of time so you're not stressing out. All right. Yeah, I, I think that's a big thing for people who, who, who haven't done a ton of cooking and, and want to do a dinner party. To be in the kitchen and away from your guests, that's, that's hard enough as it is. All but Stuff can be done ahead of time. Yes, yes. And then put the finishing touches on it so they still see you actually cooking the meal. They know you made it. But then you can also label your platters, get your utensils out so everything's there so you're not searching for anything. Put everything out and label it so that use little stickums. And then that way you know you've got everything so you're not last minute. Right. Failing to prep is prepping to fail. And look how beautiful and, and, and colorful of a dish this is going to make, too. So we can stir these up. Let's put the black beans in. Okay. I'm just going to hold this bowl for you here so that you, so it's anchored down. I'm going to put the peas in, too. Great. Yeah, that is... Very colorful. It's almost, you can almost call this a fiesta rice. Yeah, right? That's very good. Okay, you got it? Right. Yeah, when you're mixing, if you turn the bowl, it's always an easier way to do things. Okay. Yeah, gorgeous. See, there you go. Gorgeous. I could see uh, having that the next morning with maybe a fried egg on top of that. You could do that. and You could also put, you could also marinate shrimp and grill shrimp in this. That would be great with this. Sure. Sure. Smell. smell. Oh, I can smell from here, but yeah, that is, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. And you know okay. what, what I like is you've mimicked the flavors from the chicken in there, but yet there is going to be a difference because the flavors on the chicken caramelized. Right. This is a little bit more of a... Plus you have peppers. You have peppers and... Sure. You know, sure. which you didn't have in the other... And okay. that's basically it. That's it. That's it. All right. So we have our three components ready to go. That's our chicken, our rice, and our cauliflower. All that uh, remains is to uh, get cleaned up here, plated up, and eat. So we'll take a little break and we'll do just that. Okay. All right. Don't Great. go away. We'll be right back. Palm trees, coastline, craft brews. Yep, this is Southern California. But this is Torrance. Have you ever driven to a whole other city just for a bowl of ramen? Because if you haven't, that's about to change. Have you ever been to a beach that feels so much like your own private beach that you're like, where has this been all my life? Welcome, my friends, to Torrance Beach. So private, you hadn't even heard of it. Have you ever been to a mall that had literally 2.7 million square feet of shopping? Run, don't walk to Del Amo Fashion Center. And get this, Torrance is the actual epicenter of the South Bay's craft brew industry. I guess you could say the brews are just craftier here. We also have a farmer's market that's just as much about the people as it is about the food. And even our museum scene is the best of the South Bay. All this, just 15 minutes from LAX. You'll come for the city, stay for the experience, and leave as a friend. So, are you in? Welcome back. I am in the kitchen with Randy Furman, party planner extraordinaire, and Somebody planned a party. Look at this. I mean, um, Olay. I think next time you could bring a pop of color. Yeah, really. Well, <laughs> I thought it was kind of south of the border feeling, so. Right. No, everything looks gorgeous. I mean, we've got our, our, our chicken that's all roasted off, and, and you, you took those drippings, reduced them down a little bit. Right. We've got them on top. Uh, we've got our, our, wow, gosh, like you said, this could be fiesta rice. 
Yes. Right? Uh, our gorgeous rice and then our, our cauliflower, our roasted cauliflower. So, uh, sir, if I may have your plate. You may. I will dish you up some rice and we will uh, get to tasting. All right. Yeah, this looks really good, Randy. Yeah. Thank you. There, sir. All right. Okay, I'm going to do the same for myself here. Yeah, I, I think, you know, one of the things that I noticed here, too, is that even if you had a vegetarian at the table, you're still sort of good to go here. Because this rice dish with the beans is perfect side dish for a vegetarian, and then you've got the cauliflower. There you go. And you just have to sort of leave out the chicken, and you're, and you're fine. And as long as you don't make it with any animal products, thank you, sir. There you go. Um, like, in, as long as you lose, use butter and not olive oil, I mean, uh, olive oil and not butter, uh, your good. rice is going to be fine as well. All right. Shall we? Yes, we what shall. What are we going in for first, the chicken? The chicken. Okay, I will. All right. Oh, God. And you, get, you gave me the nice crispy one, too. Thank you. Let me get in then there. I'm going to go like this. We can do that. It's just us eating right yeah, here. Really? All right. And I want some of that skin on there, that nice, juicy skin. Mm -hmm. All right. It's great. I love the lemon. Lime. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Really vibrant. Really vibrant, alive. That lime comes through. I, I'm, I've got the garlic in there, and yet there's this sort of caramely quality to it. Really nice. Wait till you get the rice. I'm going in right now. I take it you're happy with the way it turned out. I am happy. <laughs> okay. I'll even have another bite. That's delicious. This would go so great as a side dish anywhere. Barbecue chicken, barbecued fish. Right? Yeah, and I love, I mean, because it really has become like a rice salad with that, the dressing that you put on it. There's a bit of that acid bite to it. Yeah. Which just makes it so nice. Um, like I said, day two on that is going to be a good experience as well. And then, of course, our roasted cauliflower. Perfect. Nutty. Just how you want it to be. It's great. And creamy. And creamy, right. So good. Randy, you did it once again. Well, thank you. You're going to come always. back? You're going to come back, or do I even have to say that at this point? You don't have to say that. <laughs> I have a permanent fixture. We have you on speed dial. Right. All right. Well, this just goes to show you we really are cooking with some of the best chefs right here in our own community. On behalf of myself, Mr. Randy Furman, everybody here at Community Cooking, thanks for watching. We will see you next time. All right. I'm going back in for more chicken. If you'd like a copy of the recipe seen on this show, send us a self-addressed stamped envelope to the Office of Cable and Community Relations. That's 3350 Civic Center Drive, Suite 200, in Torrance, California, 90503. Be sure to note the show number displayed on the screen. And don't forget, you can find all the fresh ingredients used on today's show at the Farmer's Market. Visit the one here in Torrance at Wilson Park. That's located at 2200 Crenshaw Boulevard. They're open every Tuesday and Saturday from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m., rain or shine. And if you'd like to be a guest on our show, email us at communitycooking at torrentca.gov and check us out online at youtube.com slash torrentcitycable and like us on Facebook at Community Cooking TV.